Yeah. Nice to meet now. you. I'm sorry if that makes somebody uncomfortable to see a woman, a man, and another dude singing for peace. Yeah. But we are here with Mitzvah TV, and we're curious if you are so scared to walk around in Jerusalem today and to let terrorists make you afraid to go into your house. Is anybody afraid to walk around right now? I think we're okay. I think we know where we stand in the situation. I think we're just going to walk around and pray for peace. That's what I think. Right? Yeah. Woo! I think we're not going to be moved by terrorists into hiding our, our homes because we didn't do anything wrong. When you're hiding, it means you did something wrong. When you're when you're out and about, it means you are no you you know you're protected by a Kaddish Baruch and there's nothing to be afraid. Holy so give me such a Hi, what's your name, and were you in Jerusalem last night when the sirens went off? Hello, shalom. Li korim tomer. I'm speaking in Hebrew, and I'm here for the shalom, for the unity of Am Yisrael. And this is what I'm doing right now, and I think that this is something that is very important and important to do. And I get a lot of positive feedback from the community, from the society, from the people. We're singing all the signs. כל הסוגים של האנשים, אני חושב שהמוזיקה זה משהו שהוא לא שייך לאף אחד, זה משהו שהוא שייך לכולם ביחד, ולכן אני חושב שאני מצליח דרך המוזיקה לאחד את, ה... את הכיכר כאן, להיות ביחד ובאמת לשיר בשביל השלום, כי לא נשאר לנו הרבה חוץ מהשלום. Now, um... I heard from the tapes that when the three boys were killed, the people that murdered them sang that they had killed someone. Um, did you sing and rejoice when you heard about the Arab boy that died? No, no. I didn't even know that. I think it's very wrong to do that. I think that peace brings peace and war brings war. Did you sing and dance in the streets when you heard that um, troops had moved into Gaza and that um, possibly we were going to war? No, I'm not bad for the war. I'm bad for the peace. I think that the war brings the war, and only the war brings the war. But you have to find the right way here in Israel, the small one, to make the peace between us and the Palestinians. Maybe the Palestinians אולי באמת מישהו יחשוב על איזה רעיון באמת לעשות את השלום האמיתי כי אני חושב שזה כבר 30 שנה מאז שהתחילה אינתיפאדה שבינתיים אף אחד לא הצליח לעשות שלום יש את הקיצונים שאומרים מלחמה תפתור את הבעיה אבל בינתיים זה לא הצליח וגם אלה שרוצים שלום לא יודעים בדיוק איך לעשות את זה אז צריך ללכת לחפש את ולמצוא את הדרך של השלום Yeah, yeah, of course. Can you describe what life was like in Israel when this was occurring? It's terrible. It was really bad. Not only that, I was also here in the war of the war in the 90s. It was before 20 years, I think. 1991. I remember, I was a child, I was born in 14. I remember that the first time I went to the house of my house, and then everyone was going to the house, because there were already the house. ואז הכלב ברח, ואני לא ידעתי מה לעשות, האם לרדוף אחרי הכלב או להיכנס למקלט המוגן. והייתי ילד, אז בסוף ברחתי עם, עם ההורים למקלט, והכלב הלך לאיבוד. ומאז אני זוכר את המלחמה כדבר מאוד גרוע לחיים שלי, שאיבדתי את הכלב, שמאוד אהבתי. You've lived through an experience like this. Do you have any advice to give me as an American that's trying to live my life as an Israeli? Should I be scared? What should I do if, if I hear sirens? Or what should I do if there are rockets? Okay. I want to tell you something. Yesterday, I be here and I play. And as uh, I was a And... There were a lot of people in the car and I play and when they woo woo, everybody go over, I don't know. And I stay alone here and I play and I, I think to myself, I should go or I, I play. And I, I see the sky, I, I look at the sky and I play and I, I think to myself, if I, if, if I see the, the raqueta, I run. And I play and I 
and then I hear boom, boom, and I fret. But I trust God because I play and I, I, um, I, I, I play. I'm in again. I said, but I'm doing something for the people, so God will protect me. And I stand, I play every time. Is there something that you think that we should be praying now? Is there a special tefillot that we sh that's a good tefillot for 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 peace? For this, for this time, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that the thing that we need to do right now, in Jerusalem, in general, in the land of Israel, is to try to destroy the masachim that are divided, divided, and are divided. בין, בינינו, בין החילונים לדתיים, בין, ה, בין, כל, בין כל מה שקיים כאן בארץ ישראל, פשוט לנסות להתאחד ולראות בשני את הדבר הנכון והטוב ולחיות ביחד בשלום. ואני חושב שאם אנחנו נחיה בשלום בינינו לבין עצמנו, אז אולי באמת זאת הדרך אה, להביא את השלום לארץ ישראל ולעולם כולו. דוד המלך, כשהוא בנה את בית המקדש, אז הוא חילק את החיילים. הוא חילק את ה, את ה, את בעצם את, ה, את, את ישראל לשני מחנות. מחנה אחד אה, הגן על עם ישראל עם רומחים ועם אה, כל מה שצריך, והחצי השני היו לומדים תורה ומתפללים. וזאת הדרך הנכונה שאני חושב שהיום צריכה להיות, שמי שמתפלל ולומד תורה ימשיך בזה ויעשה את זה מכל הלב כמו שצריך, כי גם ככה הוא לא נלחם ולא הולך לצבא. ובמקביל אנחנו גם צריכים להשתדל מאוד מאוד להגן על עצמנו מבחינה פיזית, כי אנחנו גם מותקפים כרגע מבחינה פיזית. וזה מה שהיה גם בזמן התלמוד, וזה גם מה שצריך לעשות היום. I'm uh, 62 from Jerusalem. We used to uh, take the tramps too, and uh, then after it happened, now we like uh, felt uh, terrifying, and uh, we hope that it never uh, ha uh, happen again. Yeah. So now we careful, and uh, we know that uh, can happen a bad situation if you do it again. And we have the knowledge about it, and we are more careful in this case. ואנחנו מנסים כמה שפחות להימנע מלקחת טרמפים ודברים בסגנון. And maybe some people who are in America or wherever they are around the world, maybe they don't understand why is to take tramps so popular. Why do so many people and young people take tramps? Um, we, uh, we take buses, trains, like everybody, but uh, in, uh, some, in so, uh, uh, there is places in Israel where no buses came and no trains we can take uh, to go there. So we have to take trams because uh, we, uh, we need to go to somewhere, like most time in uh, like uh, small towns or uh, small cities where we need to take trams and we don't have any uh, other options. So. Because some of the things that I heard that upset me, people said, well, of course, I mean, they hitchhiked. What do you expect? In America, we sort of have this mentality that it's dangerous to hitchhike. And I think that people didn't necessarily understand and know that it's part of our culture here in Israel, that there are places that are hard to get to or the buses stop running at, at very early hours. And so it's part of the cultural norm and people take tramps and, and hitchhike. And, and really, we're not usually afraid. Um, and my understanding is when you get in the car, if you feel like you're getting in the car with a Jew, you don't feel like you have something to worry about. Um, I, I, I always believe that if you see the man who takes you in his car, you see his Jew, maybe you, I can see who, who I'm coming in the car with. And what do you think about the fact that there was an Arab boy about also your age that was killed? Did you celebrate and dance in the streets when you heard that there was a boy that was killed? No, I was sad, but I know I want peace. We we don't know. We don't want anyone anyone uh, to be hurt. I, I think revenge isn't the the right way. Kill the kill the another another child is very stupid thing. And see what is now it's making another fight. Now uh, Arabic send us you know another war in uh, coming, and it's stupid. I, I think. And in your lifetime, in your 16 years, have you ever seen problems happen with rockets and fighting and troops before? Have you ever seen that before? 
Yes, I've... I've uh... We relieved in this. Last yeah, year. We'll... Last year we have in the same thing. Just um, it, it was different because it was only rockets to Israel. Wasn't this hate inside of him? I wasn't afraid to go in the street and like now I'm afraid. I'm afraid for my life. I live you know very close to Arabic, and I'm afraid maybe one day now they gonna like, cap me. I'm, I'm really afraid for my life right now. Do you think that if an Arab person walks around here in a Jewish neighborhood, they have the same fear that you have? If you would walk into an Arab neighborhood, you think an Ar no? I'm saying if an Arab person would walk here, would they be afraid of us? As you see, Arabic, uh, Arabic uh, kid uh, died a week ago. They are afraid exactly like us because we can do the same things they do to us. They are not bad, and we are not bad. But it's fight, and it's everybody looking for revenge. It's not the right way. I think so. Can you give us a message of peace in Hebrew? What? Okay. Uh, לדעתי זה לא הדרך לחיות בנקמה, וכדי להגיע לשלום אמיתי צריך, צריך לחשוב בחוכמה ולא לא להתנהג בצורה רעה אחד לשני, ואני מקווה שבסוף נגיע לשלום. I'm here with one of the live witnesses to last night's events. Can you tell me what, what's your name and what happened to you last night? My name is Yafa and last night I was actually staying um, in French Hill um, and when I heard the siren, it was actually my first night there um, staying in that apartment. I wasn't exactly sure what to do but like I heard noise in the hallway so I just went out there and one of the ladies was just standing in one of the corners, so I just stood in another corner, and um, then we just waited till a while, um, till the siren stopped, and apparently now we know we're supposed to wait 10 minutes. So. Did you ever experience anything like that before? No, actually, the other times I'd heard the siren here, it was never for an actual um, emergency. It was always, I think, for a moment of silence or a drill. And where are you from, Yafa? I'm from Canada and America. So should we blame Canada? I'm just kidding. Um, so in Canada, do things like this happen? Do rocket fires from, from people within the country attack other people from within the country? This is the first time I've ever had to, uh, you know, go to a bomb shelter or something like that, I think, in my life. So. And what about today? What about your friends and family back in Canada? What was their reaction, do you know? Um, no, I think they're probably glad that I'm safe and I probably avoid kind of getting into whatever details with them because I wouldn't want to worry them but but they called you today or they they Facebook to you and to ask if everything was okay I spoke with my dad today and I spoke with my mom last night after it took place and just kind of talked a bit about it and helped to hopefully keep them calm enough <laughs> now you're officially Canadian are you also officially Israeli have you made Aliyah yet I'm making Aliyah now. Uh, my mom's American, my dad's Canadian, so I grew up in both countries and uh, I also have both of those citizenships. So you're mid-process of making Aliyah. Based on last night's events and um, today, Shimon Peres issued a statement saying if there are more rockets today, we're going in by foot. Do you still want to make Aliyah or how do you feel about the Aliyah process based on this? I feel like I just have to be wherever I'm meant to be and that's kind of actually something that is something along the lines of what I felt before I came back here that um, wherever we're meant to be is where we'll be the safest and um, according to Hashem's will and so I just have to trust him and and uh, pray you know for his protection and things like that. So today I was in the Rova and I met a, a bunch of birthright people um, they said prior to last night 10 birthright participants wanted to stay and extend their trip and now only five do. So um, what gives you the strength to want to continue to make your Aliyah process even though you know we could possibly God forbid be on the brink of war? I feel very sh I feel Hashem with me and um, 
I I just feel like he's with me, and so unless he, I feel like he wants me somewhere else, then I'm where I need to be. Is there a specific, you mentioned prayer, is there a specific prayer that you say that sort of relaxes you or gives you comfort? I started something a while back where I told myself I was going to start praying every day and I would pray in the morning and I would pray at night and I would pray every day sort of thing, my own prayers. And I feel like over time through doing that and at first it was hard and eventually um, it actually started to feel very good. I feel like that really helped change my whole life. So. Thank you so much, Yafa. What's your name and where are you from? I'm from in uh, Romania um, and I live in a hotel. And uh, last uh, night I don't uh, hear the noise uh, because uh, the singer piano uh, very hard. You must have been in the David Citadel. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't, uh, understand? Which hotel? Uh, Zion. Oh. Um, and now that you heard that there were rockets, are you afraid to be in Israel? No. Why not? Because um, I think is uh, the country is uh, secure, and uh, I sure um, the, um, I see the people uh, is um, oh, every, everyone is uh, impossible to describe the fear. And uh, I see the rocket uh, in the m Monday uh, evening. Uh, I see the um, smoke on the sky and the uh, noise of a rocket, in interception uh, of a rocket. I'm not afraid because I'm. Uh, 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 I, believe in I believe in God. Wow. He. Um, what you have to say? So you can say, you can say. <laughs> no, in Romanian, in Romanian. Romanian, it's nice. He's from Hebrew. Are you Jewish? No, that's no. Sunt Christian. I am a Christian, Orthodox. Um, I speak Romanian, maybe. That's fine. Please speak in Romanian. He's not in Hebrew, so it's okay. Okay. So tell us, from your perspective, what you saw and how do you feel? No, no, no. Da. În primul rând, cred că viața de aici și situația în care ne aflăm îmi dă o o siguranță pentru faptul că aici am mai fost acum doi ani și nu s-a întâmplat nimic, chiar dacă luptele din între Gaza și Israel și palestinieni au fost și atunci. Am venit fără nicio frică, fără cu încredere în Dumnezeu că totul va fi ok și cred că Dumnezeu ne apără pe toți și războiul va fi se va termina. My name is Paulette Mendelson. I'm from Long Island, New York. Is this your first time visiting Israel? No. Fifth time. Fifth time. And um, how does this trip compare to other trips that you've been to? I've never been here when there were any kind of rocket attacks, and I've never had to go into shelters before. Did you have to do that last night? Yes, we just first got to Yerushalayim today, and we were in Tel Aviv, so... Wow, so I was in Jerusalem yesterday when, that, when I experienced that, and you were in a whole different city in Israel. Could, I'm going to give you the mic. Could you tell us exactly what you experienced and how did it make you feel? Um, we heard a sound that we didn't, I didn't even realize was a siren, and it was very frightening. We, um, actually I was by myself, so I ran, just followed everyone else, and we had to run downstairs. Um, it was probably one of the scariest things I ever did, and everything was fine, and about half an hour later there was another siren, and what I realized is you become desensitized to it. And um, it's still very frightening, but not quite as frightening as the first time. Um, coming to uh, Jerusalem today, driving in the taxi, there were, I think, about four sirens and four different, um, we didn't have to stop, but there were four different times where we heard that there were rockets being launched and, um, 
for us, we go home in a few days, but my heart is with people of Israel because they have to live with this. And um, every young person on the street that I think about having to be called up for IDF, I just, um, I just pray that everyone's safe. Now, let me ask you, so you said you're here on vacation. When, when the news started coming into the American media about what was happening, did you get any calls from home, or what was the reaction from your friends and family back in New York? Um, very concerned, very worried, and we've just been emailing everyone. Mm -hmm. Does it make you like want to go home tomorrow, or how do you feel about your trip now? Now that I'm here in uh, Yerushalayim, I feel much safer than in Tel Aviv. Why is that? I don't know, but I just do. <laughs> I don't know. Now, you're out on the street. I mean, you, you described last night a very terrifying experience, and even you by yourself. How come you're not, you know, cooped up somewhere um, just trying to, to keep inside? What, what makes you have the, the koach or the strength to come outside and try and enjoy the rest of your life? I, you just go on with your life, and thank God there hasn't been anything in the past few hours, so you... Your, con your life kind of goes back, and I guess that's how the Israelis do it. Yeah, I was going to say you sound very Israeli. <laughs> um, so, had you read about this type of uh, this type of situation when you were in America, maybe during the Antifada or last year when there were also things? So, what what um, is your understanding now about life in Israel when you've experienced that that may be different than when you just maybe heard or read about it in the news? It's terrifying. Uh, the last time we were here three years ago, we visited Starot. Um, my synagogue has raised a lot of money for Starot, and it's one thing to see shelters indoors for children, playgrounds, and to hear about how they have to be um, 15 seconds away from a shelter. But when you experience it, and as I said, you know, we're only, we're able to go home, um, it just your heart goes out to everyone and it's I I don't know how people do it now um, a statement was issued today by Shimon Peres saying that if uh, Gaza continues to send rockets into Israel then we will be going in by foot um, what's your response to that and what response do you hope President Obama has to that unfortunately throughout the world there's always a double standard for Jews and um, I hope the world, I hope Obama finally realizes that Israel showed a lot of restraint um, after our three boys were found. And it was only when Hamas started sending rockets our way that we were responding. Um, what I really hope for, I probably can't say, but... Um, what did you think about Obama's reaction to the three boys? Um, not as forceful as it should be. You're aware that one of the boys were American? Yes. So what do you think that he, you said it wasn't as forceful as it should be. What do you think he should have done if an American boy was, was taken hostage? Uh, I mean, he did say because, you know, it just wasn't as forceful as it should have been. I mean, yes, you know, he, his words came out, but, um, you know, there was, there was no power, there was no support really behind it. And there never really is until it's on the other side. When it was a Palestinian boy, all of a sudden, you know, it's a terrible thing. And yet, you know, Netanyahu expressed the fact that it was a horror and, and that it was a terrible thing. But yet, the Arabs never feel the same way when it's one of ours. I don't know. You, you can tell me or not tell me. I voted for Obama the first time around. I did not vote Obama the second time around. Um, did you ever vote for Obama? And if so, how do you feel about that choice now? I don't remember whether I did or not. I think maybe I did one time. Um, he's, he's not as strong a supporter of Israel as, a, as I would like. But then again, many of our presidents haven't been. So, um, and as I said, there's, there'll always be a double standard for Jews. Why do you suppose that is? Oh, I guess about 4,000 years of history. <laughs> so, You know, I, I was trying to um, describe what it's like to have that level of restraint, as you, as you mentioned. And for me, I, I feel like it's like Batman when he gets the Joker. And, 
and he says, well, I'm going to take him now to justice. And you're, are, you're looking like, don't you understand? The Joker is going to get away. Just shoot him. He's going to get away. He's not going to get convicted. He's not going to be in jail. And yet, because Batman is Batman, that's really, that's what he does. He's in the League of Justice, and no matter what we'd like him to do, we, he, that he's Batman. So sometimes I personally feel like that's sort of the, the position of the Jew in the world. We are always trying to do the right thing, the thing that's for justice. And it's very frustrating because we know how the opposition is going to react. We're here singing tonight in the streets for peace. Um, when, when the Arab boy was murdered, I didn't see anybody singing with joy or rejoicing. We sing for peace, and it's, it's very frustrating, this sort of double standard that you mentioned, in terms of our reaction to heinous crimes. Right away, as soon as that, that boy, the Arab boy, was killed, it was shock and disbelief. We couldn't think that, that Jewish people would do that because it's not the standard reaction that we, that we expect. Although, you know, it's, if you would have to say to me that in reaction to a Palestinian boy being killed, rockets would be fired right away all over the country, I would say that's pretty much what I expect. And I heard a, a shiur, a, a lecture last night from Robert and Sapporo Heller that said it's unfortunate that people have gone, gone to the level of saying, well, you know, that's what happens. That's what we expect from Hamas or God forbid, that's what we expect from Arabs. And she said, it's not. There's no way and there's no reason to ever say, well, you know, that's what people do. That's how people react. And she said, we need to hold Arabs and Palestinians and Hamas up to the same standards that they want us to have, which is to react with justice, with calm, with negotiation, and not react with bloodshed and violence. And she said, even if it's happened a hundred times, it should not be our reaction to expect that type of behavior from people. And she said that an enemy is still a person. An enemy is not an animal. And we should never look at an enemy like an animal, like they, they, that they would act in any way less than we would hope for ourselves to act in a time of death and mourning. And it's also very interesting that when the three boys were found dead, their mothers did not cry out for violence or, or retaliation they cried out for peace there weren't you know there weren't bloody riots in the street there were peaceful demonstrations outside kikar rabin and i saw also in the news that there was a um, an arab an american arab that um said that the israeli police beat him up when he was at the rally um do you want to comment on that the cousin, cousin of oh the boy that was killed um i i don't know enough about it but um you know, I saw the footage, which doesn't look good, you know, for the Israeli soldiers, but I'm sure that there was a lot more beyond that. And um, the one thing about the Arabs that my rabbi always says, you can't make peace with people who don't want peace. So until they really and truly want peace, we can't make peace with them. And what is it that you want? I want peace. I want all my our children to be safe.